Hey Ian, are the rumors true? Are we really ready to launch 9.1? Hi Josh. Yeah, it's true. Chains of Domination is ready to go. And I thought perhaps you'd like to do the honors and launch it. Oh wow, really? I get to push the big launch button? Yeah, we know community management have been taking the brunt of a lot of player frustration over the delay, and it seemed fitting that you be the one to give them the new patch. Oh, wow. Thanks, Ian. That's amazing. Well, without further ado, I hereby declare this patch launched. Launched. Um, why isn't it doing anything? I don't know. Wait, Josh, we appear to be out of conduit energy. Any idea why that could be? No. I mean, I was playing on my shaman the other day, and I just thought it would be fun to switch specs for a bit and maybe do some battlegrounds, so I may have switched a few out. I can't believe you've used up all of the office conduit energy, Josh. You're just going to have to tell the players on the forums that the patch is delayed for another couple of weeks while it recharges. Okay. Are you crying? Knowledge is power. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's time for patch 9.1. That's right, fam. It's here. Like, for reals. No take backsies. The official patch notes are out. The official 9.1 survival guide is on YouTube. Ooh, let me just check the like ratio. Okay, you know what? I'm excited. The pre-release download has been downloaded by me. It is now officially on my PC. There is nothing Blizz can do about it. They absolutely have to release this shit now on the 29th of June, 30th for Europe. And finally, we have the first and latest major update for World of Warcraft Shadowlands. And I mean, it really is the latest, am I right? <laughs> Just for the sake of the archives, yes, 9.0 was, in fact, the longest opening patch in World of Warcraft expansion history, by quite some margin at 218 days. Far too long, and the reasons are obvious and understandable, but it's also worth noting that opening patches have been trending upwards in length over the last handful of expansions anyway, and I would hope this is something that Blizzard will seriously look at addressing in the future. Because this long wait doesn't just make people down on 9.0, which without the delay is an absolute banger, and I stand by that, but it makes people judge 9.1 harsher than they should too, because honestly, no patch can be worth that wait. And with that stated, I fully intend to never speak of this delay again, and instead try my best to judge Chains of Domination on its own terms, and its own merits, and its own faults, and not through the filter of the long wait we had to get here. So, when the patch goes live, and it still feels weird to say this, this week we will get our introduction to the new area, Corthia, the City of Secrets, with two new story campaign chapters leading us there and getting us set up. The new story campaign of the next couple of months, by the way, absolute win. A+. plus. We will have the new level 9 wing of the new improved Torghast Open, which it's a bit early to tell, but it does look like an improvement. I reserve the right to change my mind. We will have a reported seven and a half minutes of new cinematics to watch, which Wowhead have said are encrypted on the latest PTR, and which include a very spectacular look at one of our favorite characters' brand new appearance, which don't worry, we're not gonna spoil for you here, although I don't know why we need to be so careful, because Blizzard already accidentally leaked it in a video that played in the background of the World of Warcraft page on Battle.net, well done. You know the cinematics never let you down, a preemptive A++ plus for those. And then after a first week of trotting around on our mounts in the moor in Corthia, season two begins in week two with the new mythic mega dungeon Tazavesh, which yes, I know you've probably heard, has an infinite pirate dragon boss, but also, much more importantly, has an everyone in the group has to play in a rock band boss. It's a fun dungeon, that's a win. The new mythic plus affix Tormented, which sees four mini bosses hanging out at various points of each dungeon, just waiting to be killed to award a selection of anima powers. And obviously a meta of anima picks and roots will form around this pretty quickly, but we've been having great fun with it on the PTR so far. It's going down as a win. The new Sanctum of Domination raid with its, and we'll be discussing this properly at some point in the video, but I'll just use Blizzard's words for now, fateful final boss fight against Sylvanas Windrunner, and the new Domination Shard armor pieces that you get from the raid, which again, we will be going into more detail, but for now, imagine tier sets, 
Now imagine the stuff you really like about tier sets. Now take those things away. That's basically domination shards. A solid, I remain to be convinced on domination shards. And all of the other stuff which will last us for the next three years or however long Chains of Domination lasts. Like 40 new levels of renown, tons of new mounts flying in the four leveling zones from week two, and a whole ton of other stuff as well, which we will probably touch on now because as is tradition, on the eve of a new content patch for WoW, welcome to the official Taliesin and Evertel, why you shouldn't come back for patch 9.1, Chains of Domination. Episode. Don't come back for 9.1 if you really hate the Maw. Although I suppose really that depends on our reasons for hating the Maw. Okay, so basically 9.1 is more Maw, like a lot more. The new area Corthia is technically a new part of the Maw, and the general day-to-day -day routine of the patch is pretty Maw-centric. So if your reason for hating the Maw is its general aesthetic and spiky, humorless edge boyness, then it's easy to see why you might not be entirely inspired inspired by the thought of a whole new patch of catching even bigger eyefuls of your least favorite site. If though your distaste of the zone stemmed from its gameplay mechanics, well actually there's a fair bit of good news. Like you can mount there now. You can even ride your flying mounts there. They won't be able to fly, obviously, but no one can stop you mounting them and riding them anywhere you please. There's no eye of the jailer to limit your time in the zone. Yeah, I know. Me trying to tell you the zone you don't like is better now because you can spend more time there is a weird one now I think about it, but it helps to exemplify the general shift in tone. It's not as oppressive as in 9.1, with all four covenants establishing footholds and lending their aid, and generally just making it a much easier experience to enjoy. And then there's the new area, Corthia, which is where you'll be spending most of your grindy, button pressy, I just want to log into WoW and mash some keys and kill some baddies and make some progressy type time. Gameplay wise, it's not totally inaccurate to compare Corthia to other freeform zones like Najatar or Mechagon or the Broken Shore. It's a single player, grindy, collecty, daily questy, currency gathery type thing, which I usually enjoy just fine without getting neck deep in all the details. But if that's not your cup of tea, then you may not be completely won over by Chains of Domination in that first week in particular before season two starts. Don't come back for 9.1 if you're incredibly comfortable in your covenant and you don't feel like swapping. With 9.1 one bringing with it a whole host of balance changes to classes, legendaries, and soulbinds, plenty of specs are finding that if they want to stay on the meta train going into season two, and you definitely do, if you've got a seat on the meta train, you want to stay in that seat. Unless it doesn't have a table or isn't by a window, or if it's facing like the opposite direction from the way the train's heading, screw that, then it might be time to jump Covenant ship and play for the other team, as it were. So for example, my longtime main is a discipline priest. In Shadowlands so far, I've been a vent fear because the Covenant ability mind games fits in perfectly to the cooldowns in my raid rotation and meant that I was properly and fully optimized for Castle Nathria. In 9.1 though, a substantial increase to the cooldown time of one of our main abilities, Spirit Shell, throw all of our lovely synergies out of the window. So in Chains of Domination, I will be swapping to Kyrian so that I can take advantage of the new Covenant Priest Legendary and one particular Mechanicos Soulbind trait. And yes, it means I'm going to be a Boy Scout Smurf Lord, and I'm kind of happy about that actually. I'm looking forward to swapping, even though I have multiple characters in each Covenant already, so it's not exactly like all new to me. I just upgraded the last of my Venthyr Sanctum bits up to level three, which means when I join the Smurf Lords, I will have increased anima rewards, even though my Sanctum upgrade progress starts from scratch with those guys. I'm going to wait till 9.1 launches so that I can take advantage of the greatly increased renown catch-up. I'm a bit sad that I don't get to hang out with Rendell anymore because he is my absolute lad, but otherwise I'm really looking forward to swapping things up. And I want to make this clear, I completely understand if everything that I've just described sounds like an absolute horrific nightmare to you. I'm not saying you're wrong if the idea of swapping covenants fills you with dread and anger, but hey, maybe you don't have to anyway, and hey, maybe if the meta says you should, you can just not bother and do like 5% less DPS or whatever, big deal. Either way, I highly recommend Wowhead's extensive guide on the new recommended covenants and legendaries for each spec in 9.1, which as always, we will be linking in the description below, along with like loads of other useful articles. Don't come back for 9.1 if your favorite thing is running plus 14 mythic keys every week, but the idea of running a plus 15 makes you sad. Oh, a 14. Oh. 
15. In 9.1, the tuning of the Great Vault is changing slightly, so that from now on you will have to complete a plus 15 key, although of course not time a plus 15 key, to make sure your weekly vault choices include a max level mythic plus item, which in 9.1 will be item level 252. Personally, this makes sense to me. It always seemed weird that Keystone Master needed plus 15s to complete, but the weekly vault could be maxed out with 14s. There's very little practical difference between the two, it just feels a bit more uniform now. And that's generally the opinion on the forums too, where players were basically in favor of the change or else unmoved. And actually, I don't know why we even made this a segment in the video, because clearly no one is going to skip out on 9.1 because of a basically meaningless change. Like, no, it was a shit show. Obviously. Yeah, F this, I'm out. Wow, 9.1's about to be dog shit, Lemafowl. These guys really hate players. RIP! Although I think it will be easier. Okay, yeah, so actually maybe this could be a reason you would choose not to come back for 9.1. Glad we did the segment. That last comment isn't completely wrong though. It feels like Mythic Plus and Chains of Domination is, in general, going to feel a bit easier than it has so far this expansion, through a combination of some pretty sensible nerfs on some of the more obnoxious elements of a number of dungeons, the fact that the Tormented Affix sees players gaining a fair bit of power by the end of each run through the anima powers they stack, and just some nice quality of life changes, like to toss up, to sup, in Oribus, downgrading your keys for you rather than having to do the downgrade dance. You all go out and you leave the group. You go back in, you make the key begin. You run back out, give the leader a shout, that's the downgrade dance. Yeah, well, you won't have to do that anymore. And I know it's only a little thing, but the idea that there is an official NPC in the game who downgrades Mythic Plus keys, and they didn't call that NPC Taliesin or Taliesin, will feel like a massive missed opportunity for the rest of my life, that's all. He put in so much work making that his thing, you know? Don't come back for 9.1 if you hated Torghast, and maybe more importantly, if you hated the reason for doing Torghast. As we touched on earlier, the Tower of the Damned is getting some big reworks in Chains of Domination, and from what I've played on the PTR, and from what I've seen on other people's streams and videos, the signs are good, with the game mode leaning in much harder on the roguelike, or really roguelite idea, taking away the death counter and the terror group, and the entire sixth floor, yes! in favor of a much more arcadey feeling score system based on completion and efficiency. You might expect that to make it a lot more fast paced, but actually there is quite a lot of emphasis on completion, so it doesn't quite work out like that. Although there is now a tower knowledge talent tree to upgrade through repeated runs of Torghast, which should make things much quicker as the patch goes on. An obviously good idea, which I'm pretty sure would have been there from the start had they not basically done the exact same idea with the horrific visions talent tree in 8.3. But look, there's a trait on here which which automatically loots enemies. That's good enough for me. That's exactly what we need. And that tower knowledge that you collect can also be used to open up the Adam Ant vaults. Oh, hi, Adamant. Which is like an extra hard bit in each wing, which can reward new cosmetics. And which I'll be honest, I hadn't really thought about that much at all before I watched the official 9.1 survival guide. And just as I was about to downvote it, because you know me, I like to follow the crowd, an awesome clip of the Adamant vaults opened, showing the big roly balls of death. And now I am totally sold on the Adamant vaults, because those roly balls look awesome. And so I upvoted the video, but then I unupvoted it again, because I didn't want people to bully me for being a shill. But then I logged in to one of my other email addresses, and I upvoted the video anyway, and no one will ever know. So you may or may not find Torghast more satisfying as a gameplay experience in 9.1, but of course the biggest complaint people have had about it so far is that running Torghast is the only real way to receive the currency for this expansion's real max level power progression grind, Shadowlands Legendaries, and that will continue in 9.1, as our Legos will now be eligible to be upgraded to levels 5 and 6, item level 249 and 262 respectively. To do that, you will need Soul Cinders, which can be collected from the new layers of Torghast, which, and at the time of writing this hasn't been explicitly explained by Blizz, but which look like they will be expanding by one a week. So layer 9 opens in week 1, layer 10 in week 2, layer 12 in week 4. These will be combined with new base items that require a regent from 
coarsier to make, so it's basically the exact same grind as before, and if you hated that, well, you're probably not gonna love it now, are you? Even though there are some nice quality of life improvements. You don't need Soul Ash to upgrade legendaries to level 5 and 6, but you do still receive lots of it, along with your Soul Cinders in the new layers, and that Soul Ash can now be transferred to alts. Or, you know, kept for your main, should you want to make any new legendaries, or even recraft existing legendaries in new slots, which you might well want to do because of another of 9.1's new features, Domination armor. Okay, so in the new raid, Sanctum of Domination, there is a ton of cool stuff to loot, like Sylvanus's bow, or the sword that eats other weapons to empower itself. And honestly, that is so cool. Good work. And there's also Domination armor, which can drop as head, chest, and shoulder pieces, plus two other slots depending on your armor type, and which can be empowered by Domination shards, a special type of gem also looted from Sanctum Raid bosses, which provide individual bonuses like any old gem, but also very powerful set bonuses if you have three items with the same type of shard embedded. It's kind of like tier set bonuses, but not. It's a fairly interesting system, and again, we are linking a super clear and useful wowhead guide below that goes into all of the details, but the upshot is, this is very powerful stuff, and ideally, you don't really want your legendaries to be taking up a potential domination armor slot as a result. And so a lot of players are finding that currently there's a clash coming because in 9.0 they made their rank 4 Lego as shoulders because of course they did because that is by far the coolest transmog slot. Imagine not making your Lego as shoulders. And what this means is that in 9.1 instead of upgrading their existing rank 4 to rank 5 and then 6 as the patch goes on as expected they will actually be recrafting that legendary in a whole new slot from scratch which and there's no nice way of saying this, was a shit show, obviously. Reason number 587 to not resub to this garbage. They really do hate fun. This might be the dumbest thing yet in this shit show of an expansion. I actually resubbed just so I could cancel my sub to this absolute bollocks. Which, as a knee-jerk reaction, I can completely understand. On the face of it, an argument can be made that Blizz is forcing players to lose progress that they have made because they crafted their legendaries in a slot which now isn't ideal because of the new domination armor. And yes, Ian has said since the start that tier sets are coming back at some point in Shadowlands, so, you know, frankly, your shoulder Lego was always going to have to be recrafted at some point, but whatever. I can understand the criticism. Something something Blizz not valuing the player's time. But luckily, that fear proves pretty unfounded with the knowledge of how legendary upgrades and power works in 9.1 and as a wise dad once said knowledge is power so allow me to impart to you that knowledge and in the simplest possible terms so I'm not gonna recite all the exact maths I'm just gonna tell you the upshot so basically if you have two players the Warcraft Pro Tally who made his Lego as a ring even though everyone laughed at him because he knew tier sets were coming and stupid noob know nothing about the game uh, I don't know, let's just think of a name at random. Mike, say, who, because they know nothing about the game and are rubbish at it, made their Lego as a hat. It's not their fault, they're just a noob, they know no better. Now, in 9.1, both the Chad, Tally, and the Virgin Mike have read the relevant Wowhead articles and learned about domination armor. Tally just needs to upgrade his existing level 4 ring to rank 5 and then 6. Easy. Mike, though, needs to start again from scratch. And because he's a casual scrub with no gold, decides he can't afford to buy the base item at levels 1, 2, 3, and 4, so decides to craft the new legendary at rank 5 to begin with. So both Tally and Mike do Torghast every week in 9.1 to get their currencies, layer 9 in week 1, layer 10 in week 2, etc, earning both Soul Cinders and Soul Ash. By the time the Chad Tally has earned enough Soul Cinders to upgrade his ring to level 5, Mike has earned enough Soul Ash and Soul Cinders to craft a completely new level 5 Lego. And this is important, Mike hasn't done any more work than Tally, and they both had to buy a level 5 base item, so he hasn't spent any more gold either, apart from like the thousand gold for the two new missives he needs for secondary stats. In the meantime, they've both still had to use their existing rank 4 Legos in Dungeons and Raids, obviously, so their gameplay experience and work and gold put in has been exactly the same. That is not a defense, that is not a shill, 
that is just the facts. Now, of course, there is the chance that Virgin Mike will loot a Bisp Domination hat and the gem he needs for it in week one of the raid, in which case he may need to hold on to it for a week or so before his new rank five Lego arrives. But honestly, if his Bisp hat and gem really do drop in week one, I'm gonna guess he's not really gonna mind. But even more, and actually it pains me to say this, but maybe Mike's complete lack of talent at playing this game actually makes him the winner, because Blizz put out a blue post this weekend saying that newly crafted Legos like Mike's will automatically have a gem slot, not a domination shard slot, on them as standard in 9.1. A really sensible change. And you know, a good change is a good change. So well done for the good change, Blizz, is what they all said, well, everywhere, but especially on the forums where players nodded their heads in sage approval of a common sense move from Blizz, which was no, it was a shit show, obviously. Blizzard has announced in today's patch notes that the game still fishing sucks balls. Fishing unbelievable! Holy fish, Blizzard sucks. Oh man, they just threw that middle finger up to those of us who recrafted now instead of after the patch. Talk about big ouch, bro. And yes, as it stands, it's not ideal news for players that have put in the effort in the last week or so to buy sockets from Venari in prep for 9.1. It's not ideal if newly crafted Legos get sockets included, but upgraded Legos don't. Although, as we have just established, it takes exactly the same amount of time and effort and gold to craft a level 5 legendary from scratch as it does to upgrade a 4 to a 5. So instead of upgrading it, just recraft it, get the slot. But I agree, that's clunky and confusing. It'll be interesting to see if Blizzard keep it that way. But in the grand scheme of things, it's really not important. And I can't help suspecting that the strength of feeling in this reaction comes less from the actual change, which is a good change no matter how late in the day, and more from people who were angry about the whole Lego recrafting drama, realized that anger was slightly misplaced after having it explained to them by some handsome creator or other with very professional looking graphics, felt a bit silly because of that and have kind of transferred that anger to this topic when it really doesn't deserve it. Pretty strong, I worked hard to pay off my student debts so it's totally wrong that student debts should be forgiven for anyone else, even if that would really help the country as a whole. Vibes going on in some of these replies, you know? Finally, don't come back for 9.1 if you want to kill Sylvanas. Because yeah, the climactic fight of Sanctum of Domination is against Sylvanas, but that doesn't mean we kill her. And in fact, there is mounting evidence to suggest that we won't. Like the fact that the title you get for defeating her on Mythic is Famed Bane of the Banshee Queen, and not Famed Slayer of the Banshee Queen, like you might expect. Added to devs who keep doing interviews and saying stuff like, after Sylvanas is defeated and this raid is a great climax for her story so far, which, you know, it almost makes me suspicious. It makes me suspicious that they are going out of their way not to say that she dies at the end of the raid. Because the whole famed Slayer title, we got famed Slayer of Denathrius and famed Slayer of Ashara, and neither of those actually died. So why not famed Slayer of Sylvanas? Now, if I was in a tinfoil bra kind of mood, and I definitely am, I would posit that they would want us to think we are picking up on secret clues that she won't die. So it's more of a shock when she does. And let's be clear here, this is Shadowlands. Dying definitely doesn't mean the end of her story. If we killed her at the end of the raid, that just means her soul would finally be allowed to be judged by the Arbiter, whenever she's back online, and be sent to the rightful part of the Shadowlands, finally. She'd go from being like Tally's Forsaken Warlock, an undead war visiting the Shadowlands to being like Draka, a properly dead resident of the Shadowlands. And, you know, being dead hasn't exactly kept Draka out of the story so far. I can't imagine it will for Sylvanas. So actually, yeah, do come back for 9.1 if you want to kill Sylvanas, but not if you think that means we'll never see her again. So here it is, finally, it's here. Oh, thank 9. God. Well, I know, I, I was pretty much, I mean, are you going to be able to find time in amongst all of your Final Fantasy fourteen playing to actually play I mean, any of it? I don't know. You know you can only <laughs> play one game at a time. It's true, and not only that, you have to take breaks from that game every now and then to make sure you go to the other games forums and, and tweets and things exactly. to tell them exactly how much they are bad and wrong and, and shit. What are you looking forward to most about 9.1? Okay, I'm really looking forward to just the guild picking up again and raiding. Just having some online friends. Like, I just want online friends again. <laughs> I want to hang out. I want to raid. I want to, you know, do the trash talk, the gentle trash talk that we do. Are you one of those people that has to change your covenant? Are you switching covenant? Because I'm going to join you currently in, this, in the Boy Scout Smurf Lords. Because the meta for, uh, what do you play? 
Uh, excuse me, hunter, marksman hunter. Okay, so the meta for marksmanship hunter has changed. Uh, so presumably you'll be swapping covenants, right? Uh, well, guess what? I chose the right covenant all along. All you people who laughed at me for being a Kyrian hunter, well, take that. <laughs> you were so meta that you were meta like, like an entire way tier before. early. And you know what? I don't even have to recraft my ring. Although I am because I'm going to get a socket. Wait, my wait. legendary, I crafted it in the ring. Same thing. People so were that... like, oh, Evie, do it on the shoulders. And I was like, no. I'm gonna do it on the ring because obviously I'm gonna get the heroic shoulders. You from... haven't read my script, but I make these exact jokes <laughs> <laughs> in this episode. Like I make these exact jokes that you're making now, and so I think that's great. great. Like, like, yeah. Do you know what your biscuit is that you're aiming for in that raid? Yeah, it's after? the bow. <laughs> the 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 bow is is the piece of gear. We will, of course, be streaming uh, the uh, the launch of the patch on Tuesday, a little bit later because we're seeing some family and things like that. Uh, yeah. But we will be streaming um, all throughout uh, the launch patch week. Uh, and I dare say there might be some cinematic analysis videos Ooh. to be making as well. So okay. join us for those things. But thank you for joining us today for this episode. If you like this episode, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our videos happen. And patrons, no lie, thank you. Yeah, seriously. Uh, without Without you, there'd be a whole lot less Talies and Nevertel. Thank you. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is any other creator's patron. Literally, literally anyone else. <laughs> no, my name is Talies, and from me. And me, Evertel. And an iron too. Until next time. Cheerio.